Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Tourism Tuesday, the Ray Page County edition. I'm sitting at an ice cream shop because Edison knows me so well. And to make the drive over, you just keep upping the ante. Uh, last month, we spent a lovely afternoon at South Court Inn, which was absolutely beautiful. We've been to Main Street Bakery where there were cupcakes. And today, you have upped your game. We're sitting at Main Street Flavors. I am surrounded by dozens of ice cream flavors. You are enjoying Dippin' Dots. Oh, uh, yeah. Because the Dippin' Dot dude <laughs> is here with here, us. Here. <laughs> so apparently, for everyone listening, the trick to get Janet to come out in real clothes to visit you is food and coffee. Yeah, typically food, wine, Risky. coffee, whiskey is always good. Or a shopping opportunity. I have always enjoyed when we did Hawksbill Trading Company, Nest and Hive, all of those places Don't are always lie, good. It's because I'm your best friend, I know. Duh. Duh. <laughs> You're still on the air, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> Edison Evans is here with me from the Lorray Page Chamber of Commerce. We're going to talk for a little bit with Tydell Wilson. He is the owner at Main Street Flavors. And not that I wouldn't expect an ice cream shop to be happy when you walk in the door, but good choice on the colors on the wall and you've got art hanging. This is a really cool space. Thank you for that. We try to at least keep that tone similar to flavors that you would look at as a kid to pick out what kind of ice cream you want. We hold that same space on these walls for sure. Give me a little history for how you became the ice cream guy. We were joking before we started recording and I asked, were you that kid that was always chasing the ice cream truck? My husband, whenever he hears it within a three mile radius, runs around the house screaming, ice cream, ice cream. Were you that kid? I wasn't that kid. No, I, I think like Edison, we didn't have the same privilege or luxury of having a residential ice cream truck around. The very best that we could do is go visit our grandmothers possibly. <laughs> and they would make sure that we had more ice cream than our stomachs could handle. Yep. How did you end up here? So it was just serendipity. More than anything else, post end of quarantine, trying to figure out what the next move was. And it just worked out that this was a space that was available. The previous owner was looking to move on and I thought, why not? Now, this was an ice cream shop before you moved in, right? Was it called Main Street Flavors or is that all your creation? Oh, that's a brand new name. It was called the Sugar Shack. St yeah, Steven Sugar Shack. So you've got Hershey ice cream. We do. Which I'm a huge fan of. Why choose Hershey when there are tons of other options out there? It was grandfathered in. So as I had taken it over, we had approximately 24 flavors of Hershey's and 12 flavors of a local creamery called Smiley's. And all that stuff seemed to work, so if it's not broke. <laughs> <laughs> I personally am a huge fan of hand-dipped ice cream. I love a little soft serve cone every now and then, but I am all in on a hand-dipped cone cup milkshakes i think taste better when they're made with actual hand dipped ice cream so i am a huge fan of the fact that you've got that type of ice cream here we get asked about soft serve quite a bit i tell people that we have a microwave <laughs> <laughs> i don't want that <laughs> that's as close as we come i think there's definitely that hard line nothing wrong with some custard nothing wrong with some soft serve that's just this ice cream man's opinion, but I do prefer the hand dip myself. How many flavors do you have here for someone to choose from at any given time? If you consider just the ice cream, there's consistently gonna be 36 flavors, but I have a little speakeasy freezer that I keep some extra flavors in. So we run about 40 just in ice cream. Tell me more about the speakeasy. You have to know the secret knot. <laughs> We're not going to do that on the radio because then it wouldn't be a secret anymore. But you'll tell me that during the break. Certainly, certainly. There's a way to look like a hero consistently, and that is to take a flavor that someone immediately comes in for and then not display it, right, but still have it. And there's an immediate disappointment that they're like, oh, my goodness, you don't have that flavor. I'm like, well, actually, little did you know. It's your lucky day. That's right. That is like the epitome of salesmanship. I agree. That is like genius retail marketing. You become that guy. Right. Add it to the business seminar. Yes, I'll add it to a future business seminar, which we're going to do when we're done here. Yep. <laughs> when we're done recording, because we're here a week ahead of when people are listening to it. So they will have missed it already. But also, Dippin' Dots are superior. So talk to me about Dippin' Dots for a little bit, because I had never heard of them, and then they started popping up every time we went to Ocean City. We saw them up and down the boardwalk, and I, they just 
they look kind of weird. I mean, Edison <laughs> seems to be enjoying his. What is a Dippin' Dot? A Dippin' Dot is a flash frozen, highly concentrated ice cream bowl. You have to keep these at minus 40 degrees and they're created, I believe, at minus 360 degrees. Anything beyond those temperatures, you start to get a different texture. But if those temperatures are right, what it does, and I've seen this face, it's a classic look. If you've never had Dippin' Dots, you're gonna take a little taste, put it in your mouth, and it's gonna be, wait a minute, what is going it's on? It's like Pop Rocks when we were exactly. kids. <laughs> and adults do it, kids do it. That first time, there's just an immediate distrust of the level of cold that you're experiencing. But then that subtle melt, and the flavor starts mm -hmm. to pop out. So Edison looks like he is thoroughly enjoying his Dippin' Dots. Do they come in flavors like the other ice creams do? Yeah, we actually have 10 flavors, which is an abundance of Dippin' Dot flavors. Typically, maybe you'll see six, at most eight. So we're holding some serious Dippin' Dot space. How much time do I have once you put it in the cup before it starts to melt on its own? <laughs> I mean, I'm not as much of an authority on this subject as someone else is here. So I will turn that question over to Edison. So yeah, how long, once you put it in the cup, how long do I have before it's a mushy mess? It melts on the bottom, but it keeps its, like, Consistency? doesn't become mushy like ice cream does when it, it becomes more like an ice cream texture when it melts together. Oh, see, now that makes sense. Because I always like, especially on a cone, the bottom of the cone is always the best because it's yeah. always the melty part of the ice cream. When I'm eating ice cream out of a container, around the edges that melts is always the best part. Is there a favorite flavor? Is there a popular flavor? Do you swap them out like you do? I know that's a lot of questions. No, oh, no, I'm keeping up though. I've got all the answers to all of that in sequence. Yes, no, maybe. Uh, they definitely range like rainbow ice, which to me tastes a lot like frozen Skittles, probably right up there with cotton candy and banana split. I'd say those are the top three. If I ran out of any of those three, I would be run out of this town. <laughs> and you can mix the flavors because you got cotton candy and strawberry. Yep. So you can pick a couple of multiple flavors and they all mix together and then they gel together, I guess, when you're eating them. Yep. <laughs> cotton candy, strawberry sounds like a fabulous combination. It was delightful. <laughs> is that your standard? Do you have a regular one or do you get something different every time you come in? It varies between cotton candy and the banana split. It's a banana split. It tastes like the bananas and all the things that you would normally find in a banana split, only in teeny tiny little dots. Exactly. Yep. Is ice cream of the future, what, 30 years ago? <laughs> in the future yeah. is now. We landed. That's right. <laughs> do you have kids that come in that aren't really quite sure? Maybe they've never heard of it or seen it and they're looking at you like this isn't really ice cream. What kind of experiences do they have? A lot of kids think it's just toppings oh, right because it, it looks, looks like, like sprinkle topping. yeah right, exactly and they're like i'll oh, have toppings strawberry chocolate if i hear someone say to me whether they're a kid or an adult that they've never had dippin dots i change that immediately i give them at least a little sample specifically because i want to see their face go what is this and, and then, then oh my it, goodness this oh yes great. this is great i'll take more of that please right. <laughs> there's also something with dippin dots I'm lactose intolerant, but Dippin' Dots doesn't upset my stomach. Oh, that's odd. Rainbow ice is dairy-free, too. It's all the best parts of ice cream without all of the, the yeah, <laughs> all of the nightmare Besides. afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had a Dippin' Dots sign outside advertising that we offered it, and I would see people from across the street see that sign run headfirst into traffic without looking either way, <laughs> truly risking it for the biscuit and come in here and get some of those dots. Because, like I said earlier, typically it's something that you see in vacation spots like Ocean City, Myrtle Beach, at the beach. It's not something that you would expect to find in your neighborhood ice cream shop. So it's a really a big perk that you've got it here. Oh, absolutely. And it comes from Richmond on dry ice. And it's really cool just to have access to 10 flavors of Dippin' Dots and help people with that nostalgia of going back to those <laughs> moments at Ocean City or amusement parks that they truly enjoyed, yeah. Do you swap out the flavors based on the seasons or is it pretty standard across the board, the flavors that you have? Yes, yeah, they standard. Sometimes they'll pop up with another two or three flavors that I can investigate, but typically for the season, I'll run with 10 solid. And you're always available, I assume, Edison, to be a taste tester in case there's a new flavor he's just not quite sure about. 100%. <laughs> See the things that all I connect you, you with? All you gotta do is give me a call. I'll be right here. I'll work right across the street. Yeah, it's easy enough. And if you walk over, 
that negates any of the calories that may have been found. You don't have to go to the gym the next day because of it. That's true. So you're technically walking it off here and walking it off back. So it's like a free bonus. Even better. <laughs> a little known fact is that I don't charge anybody for the sugar. So everything here is sugar free. <laughs> there you go. If you're not paying for it, it doesn't count. <laughs> We're going to go to break. Before we do, tell me your address. Where can people find you here in Luray? Absolutely. 40 East Main Street. We're right downtown across from the Pink Movie Theater. Which makes it easy to Too find. Easy. And what are your hours? We stay in season seven days a week. Uh, we were 12 to 10. Now that we're coming out of season, we're five days a week, one to 10. And we're closed Tuesday and Wednesday. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Tadell Wilson. He is the owner at Main Street Flavors. Edison Emmons is here with me. It is Luray Page County's Tourism Tuesday. We're going to come back and talk more in just a couple of minutes. Hi, I'm Machiko, a senior at Mountain Vista Governor's School. Together with environmental nonprofit Sustainability Matters, we're rebranding recycling. Unfortunately, not all plastics are recyclable. Some localities only take plastic bottles. Others take all number one and number two plastics. Almost no one takes number four through seven. Plastic bags can't go in with the regular plastic recycling, but you can drop them off and other soft plastics in film drop-off spots at most supermarkets. For more on how we're rebranding recycling, look for hashtag rebranding recycling on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, or visit sustainabilitymatters.earth. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Tourism Tuesday, Larray Page County edition. We're sitting in Larray proper, actually, with Edison Emmons from the Larray Page Chamber of Commerce. Tydell Wilson is here with us. He is the owner of Main Street Flavors. Tydell, we talked a lot in the first segment about the ice cream in general, and then we got off on a tangent about Dippin' Dots. Edison has now finished his. So I'm curious to see whether he's going to get another one to go. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> I will go to the gym just for extra different dogs. It's fine. <laughs> there are certain things that are worth that effort. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about the hand-dipped ice cream. Again, reminding people it is Hershey's ice cream. I have to tell you, I'd forgotten just how many flavors Hershey has available. Typically, we think chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. That is not the case when you walk in the door here. No, absolutely not. 24 Hershey's flavors stock, and then 12 from a local creamery, so 36 altogether. As you can see with the Hershey's, you get anything from your traditional chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, peach, up to Play-Doh and dark chocolate, raspberry, Thank banana pudding. Much. Thank you, sir. You, you could find pretty much the whole gamut with Hershey's lineup. And unfortunately, they dropped 20 flavors this year. What? Yeah, yeah. Some of the standards too, like chocolate chip, just straight up chocolate chip. No. -uh. Oh yeah, I'm the bad guy this year to so many people because 20 flavors are not present. See, and I was gonna ask you about chocolate chip or chocolate chocolate chip in the speakeasy, so I guess I don't even have to do that now. Nope. <laughs> I, I mean, that speakeasy. That seems crazy. I agree. And what they did last year was they often ran out of specific very popular flavors because maybe they had too much going on. So as they pared it down this year, they haven't run out of anything that I can think of off the top of my head all season. So it's somewhat helpful. And do they change their flavors based on the seasons? Like, will you get a pumpkin type flavor? And I'm not, for the record, everyone listening, I'm not one of those pumpkin people. <laughs> I may have one pumpkin spice latte in the entire season and it's not the first day of fall. But people seem to love pumpkin flavored things when fall rolls around. Do they even have a pumpkin flavored ice cream? So they do and they have an apple pie. They have some of your standard seasonal varieties that people get pretty hype on. Yeah. And the other thing that I love about the hand dip is that I can get a scoop of cappuccino crunch with a scoop of chocolate or a scoop of vanilla. You can mix and match yourself and we encourage it i've only made a face one time <laughs> that's pretty good considering <laughs> but yeah we encourage it go crazy even milkshake combinations oftentimes i'll see someone come in and they'll be so 
enthralled by all the combinations of flavors that they could potentially pull off and you almost see the wheels turning in their head and they're like you think black and white caramel and pistachio would work in a milkshake <laughs> let's like, see no. <laughs> that's the other upside i think too to having hand dipped ice cream and having so many different flavors is that they are all available in a milkshake whereas traditionally you've got certain flavors of a milkshake and those are all you've got that's not the case when you walk in the door here not at all and it really you could pull off almost an endless variety never getting bored in the course of at least two or three years of trying every combination humanly possible certainly and you do smoothies we do love our smoothies initially when i took this space over i was actually going to scrap the ice cream yeah I, that's the face that i get <laughs> true story uh, and just go with fresh pressed juices and smoothies that's something that i'm very passionate about that was an awful idea. By the way. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't abandon it altogether Same. and instead it morphed into smoothies and other things that you can offer here. Exactly. I pretty much gave myself away right off the bat when I took over because I was driving a Prius with a pro socialism bumper sticker <laughs> and I had a green smoothie up on my wall in an ice cream shop. People knew where I was from pretty much right away. <laughs> and it also then also explains to us when you were telling us before we started recording about the free hug text messages <laughs> that typically go out to customers. So you have kind of given your hippie self away right. right out of the gate. That's right. <laughs> Love it though. Yes, yeah, good. I'm guessing that you've been here long enough now that you have people that walk in the door and you immediately know what they're going to get. They want a scoop of snickerdoodle on a sugar cone with the peanut butter chips on top of it or something. Do you have the regulars? Oh yeah, absolutely. My One of my favorites, she's known as Coconut Lady. <laughs> Literally just Coconut Lady. I know her first name, but I prefer to call her Coconut Lady. And I guess like I'm ice cream guy or Dippin' Dot Dude, she could be coconut lady all she wants. It's... And you have all of the toppings. They're all here in a jar. You've got the regular ones, but then you have some interesting ones. Like I'm seeing pink, I guess those are chocolate covered pretzels. Yes, yeah, strawberry covered pretzels, exactly. So you should have gotten those with your Dippin' Dots. You did not check out the full <laughs> we selection. We haven't left yet. <laughs> <laughs> what are my cone options when I come in? Because I like myself a giant waffle cone. Do oh, you have those? Yeah, absolutely. So giant waffle cone, check cake cone check i've heard it called wafer cone or regular cone but to me i know it as cake cone <laughs> that's Wa what i know it as yeah. for sure. <laughs> uh, and then the sugar cone the standard sugar cone which is the riskiest of all the cones really because oh, yeah. it's not it doesn't have that base exactly it's a small little margin of error on that one how many scoops can you get on oh, a cone have you tried to push the envelope ever <laughs> i was dared to push the envelope i believe this young man was probably about eight years old <laughs> on vacation from germany and he said, I bet you couldn't put four scoops on one of these cones. I said, oh, I'll take that bet. We're going to find out. I double dog dare you. That's it. Yeah. And? I put four on there and it looked pretty sloppy and I was terrified the whole time watching him eat it and just <laughs> right. waiting. I felt like I was willing it to stay on there because I was so terrified. It because it's one thing to be able... mop bucket. Right, yeah. Because it's one thing to be able to get them on there and stack them, but I, it didn't occur to me until you said him trying to eat it. It's an entirely different experience trying to eat it without it toppling one way or the other. I tell people to cone at your own risk. <laughs> And then I was asking you earlier about pup cups. Starbucks has made them famous. Do you have ice cream for dogs? Absolutely. We don't just have ice cream for dogs. We have ice creams for dogs and dog toppings. Like? <laughs> the residual dad joke in line is, wow, you could get a dog bone on your coffee because dog bones are literally up there by our <laughs> toppings. So, yeah, so be careful you don't reach your hand into the wrong jar. <laughs> we have some rambunctious teenagers in this world that love to dare each other to eat dog bones on ice cream, and it's happened. Ah, well, yeah, leave it to the teenagers. I am thankfully wise beyond my years where that's concerned. Yeah, no, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> I do admit it looks like a lot of fun, though, because it's almost like um, a one-up thing where four or five of them come in at a time and they order for each other the grossest combinations they could possibly concoct so far it's the worst that i've heard is cotton candy ice cream with caramel drizzle and 
dog bones and Lucky Charm marshmallows. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But hey, when you consider the state of the world right now, I mean, that is things. the best wholesome crazy fun that teenagers can have in a safe place. I would be all in. Yes, I would sir. do some sort of contest to yeah. see who can have the craziest, weirdest ice cream and then give one of those kids a scholarship. Now we're talking, <laughs> yeah. Have a have monthly yes. like list and your shoppers get to vote on it and the person gets a free ice cream cake. Something along those lines. I think that would be I got so you much on the fun. Ideas. <laughs> and we're recording this a week or so, a little a little less than a week in advance. We're sitting here on a Thursday afternoon, but this coming Thursday, as people are listening, you're hosting the business after hours. So people are gonna get to come and see all of this gloriousness for themselves. I look forward to that. Yeah, the chamber has been nothing more than delightful and encourage folks to come out, take a listen to what we've put together here. Get some ideas as far as the grossest combinations you want to pull off and come check us out with the chamber. And it's a perfect spot because there's plenty of parking, there's indoor, there's outdoor, there's no shortage of selection. This is probably going to be one of your most popular business after hours all year long. And they're a new member and people like to see what new members are all about and anytime there's food involved. <laughs> and you could not have ordered better weather. Yeah for the week. So you guys are really checking all the boxes. It was my idea. Of course it was your idea. It was, that was the opening that I was trying to give to you. I was kidding. <laughs> so tell me again where you're located. 40 East Main Street in downtown Luray, and we are right across from the Pink Movie Theater. And what are your hours? We are open five days a week right now from one to 10. We're closed Tuesdays and Wednesdays so I can go fish and do laundry. <laughs> I mean, that's a perfect day. I was going to say, I think one of those is important. My husband would think the other one's important. So that's You're good to fishing, know. right? Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> but nice try. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. And then can people follow you on Facebook? Do you do specials or deals that maybe they would find there on your Facebook page? I, I've struggled to figure out how exactly to brand on Facebook. It, the only reason I'm on Facebook is because my mom asked me to be like five <laughs> years ago. Uh, that helped out with the business reality. So we do have a Facebook page. I tend to be a little sappy and vulnerable and super honest. That's <laughs> we worked love very it. well. That's, yeah, here see, for that's it. Quite, yeah, that's, that's perfect. You have found your lane, and that's what I tell all businesses. Find your lane and stay there in it. <laughs> well, thank you for inviting Edison and I over today. This has been a fun conversation. I'm going to get me, I'm going to be plain Jane and get a chocolate milkshake before we leave because Edison and I are heading over where I'm going to teach five do's and don'ts about Facebook for business pages. Oh, so you may have that. to, yes, yeah. come on over for that. But good job, Edison. I can't wait to see what we do in October. Yeah, that look tells me that <laughs> you can't either. <laughs> the new crafting studio in downtown. Ooh, that mm -hmm. might be fun. They better have orange beads and orange things. I don't know. Are you coming here for in person? If they have orange beads and orange things. I will things. specifically email them and ask. Because <laughs> I always take a chance to see Jana. Where can people get details about all the chamber happenings? So you can check us out on Facebook or Instagram at Larry Page Chamber. Or you can go to visitlarraypage.com. We've got information on all of our events, community events, joining the chamber. Pretty much everything chamber-wise is in that one location. And you guys have been doing a lot of ribbon cuttings. We have. Which is a phenomenal thing. It's something else like Business After Hours that really draws people yeah. to your business. So being a chamber member gets you the ability to have one of those ribbon cuttings. Absolutely. Well, thank you. I appreciate today's time. I appreciate your time. I will be back tomorrow. It is a brand new episode of The Valley today, as it is every single day. Meet me back here for, I have no idea what, but a fun conversation, I'm sure. <laughs>